in Eastern Canada, there was a entire people called the Baotech people. And the Baotech people um, uh, were a vibrant people. Um, and when settlers came into the Eastern uh, coast of Canada to, to form St. John's, what would become St. John's, um, they cut off the Baotech people's source of food because um, they, they survived off fish. Um, and then when it wasn't fish, they would survive off the great auk as a bird. And they also um, over, over hunted and uh, really, they, I think they made the great auk extinct. So the Baotic people starved for starving and um, a lot of them died from starvation. And then a lot of them were actually taken, uh, renamed, and brought overseas to show off like they were they were like circus people like they were like in a, in a zoo, in a zoo and they would often die from disease over in Europe so um, like one 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 very well known uh, lady one of the books that i wrote is called um um Shana Dithit. and Shana Dithit was a biotech person and her name was changed to Nancy April um, because what they did was they, they would give them an English name and then the month they were kidnapped, then that would be their last name. So anyway, so it's a very dehumanizing, um, dehumanizing thing. Um, yeah. And so like, you know, I think that one of the things that I, I think what I tell everybody is just to keep in mind that, you know, these are all like human beings, you know, they're not numbers that are found at these grave sites. My grandmother went to Norales Residential School for almost 10 years, um, up until the early 1930s. Um, and in that school, um, I think a lot of, a lot, a lot of like kind of bad things happened. I won't go over a lot of it because of, of your age, but like um, you know, some of the things that, you know, the, the staff did were they used to like actually tie children up so that they couldn't escape because kids kept trying to run home because um, because they wanted to be with their families. And so they would actually, during summer or winter, they would run away and they would try to go back to their homes. Hello, David. Oh, I don't, I don't know what happened there, sorry. I think my Wi-Fi shut off or something. Anyway, so I'm now I'm outside with my phone. Anyway, so yeah, so at, at the school, there were a lot of things that went on that, and I think that the important thing is that the things that went on at Norway Isles went on at most of the schools across Canada. Um, so, and, you know, my grandmother, for example, um, you know, wasn't allowed to speak Cree um, at any point. Um, she was, uh, she and other children were, were often um, um, disciplined when they were, when they were speaking their language uh, or, or caught speaking their language. Cause a lot of kids tried to just out of habit because that was what they spoke. And, um, and then they weren't able to, um, they weren't allowed to. So um, yeah, and then and kids um, would, would run away either to get home or to escape what was happening at school. You know, um, one community, um, their chief um, risked uh, jail time by keeping all of his, all the children of the community away from the school, um, his, uh, from Barron's River. Uh, really a hero chief um, and when the reverend um, uh, wrote him to admonish him for keeping the kids away um, he he wrote this I think I might have mentioned this in our meeting but he wrote this really um, very pointed um, email back to the reverend um, saying that there's a there's a higher judge than you and I'll, I'll wait to get judged by that guy <laughs> so um, because the kids were being fed rotten food you know and the kids were um, being, you know, they weren't looked after. And so the chief said, no, we're not, uh, we're not gonna let our kids be, be treated that way. Um, so, but some communities didn't have that luxury to be able to do that. Um,